Hello students, I am Akash Gupta again and I welcome you all on Physics Wala. Today I am going to share with you a very special concept, a very special thought that how to write most important theories in CBSE exam. Obviously, uh, this uh, thing, the things that uh, the uh, techniques I am going to share will work in every exam of board level. Okay, so uh, let's begin. Whenever exams are on, there are two hurdles in mind. The first is the knowledge part and I'm sure you are working very hard for that and our videos are too helping you a lot in that okay so you have to prepare all the chapters all the syllabus and then there are exams and let's face it okay so when you face exams okay uh, watch this video very carefully with full concentration I'm sure uh, the skills the uh, the techniques I'm going to discuss will help you a lot and this will definitely going to improve your marks in CBSE term 2. Okay, let's begin. So in this video, I will mainly focus on theoretical questions, theoretical answers and in the next video, I will focus on the numerical questions. Okay, so the first of all, you have to remember a few points and uh, definitely these points are uh, will, will prevent you from making mistakes, definitely. So, your answer should be to the point. Remember this point. The, your answer should be to the, to the point. Extra details will not help you because the examiners are uh, very clever. They are very intelligent. And if you write uh, extra things uh, to uh, improve your marks, or are you thinking that uh, writing uh, more will give you more marks? It is wrong. It is also uh, it will also decrease your time for attempting big questions which are asked in section C and D. So always uh, remember your, your answer should be to the point and your handwriting must be clear and without overwriting you have to write. Okay. Uh, many students think that handwriting should be beautiful. Obviously beautiful handwriting is very uh, good but for clearing exam, for clearing exam, beautiful handwriting has uh, nothing to do with clearing exam and getting full marks. If you write properly, if you write neatly and clearly and if examiner is uh, able to read your handwriting and there is no overwriting, definitely you are going to score full marks in your exam. It doesn't matter where, whether you write beautifully or suppose you have a little a less beautiful handwriting, it doesn't matter. Okay, the answer, the answer should include diagrams and uh, mathematical equations if they are required. Okay, you have to check whether the uh, answers require mathematical equations or diagram and if they do, you have to draw them, you have to write them properly. Okay, so uh, always remember this, diagrams and equations help you. So do not use the diagrams which are irrelevant. Do not use the diagram which are not required. Okay, always save your time. Okay, the next important point is you have to try to follow the sequence of the questions of examination paper. If you want to attempt few questions before uh, some questions which are in sequence, Always try to complete the section which uh, in which you are in and then after completing the section, then start a new section. Okay, you can uh, attempt section D before section C, but do not mix them in random order. Okay, so uh, try to follow the sequence of uh, questions in paper. Next point, next and very important point. Your answer should be point wise or paragraph wise. If you see that your answer answers uh, has a big paragraph, okay, split it. If you are not able to make it point wise, split a uh, paragraph into many paragraphs by placing one thought in first paragraph, the second thought in second paragraph, so that your answer would look obviously beautiful. Okay, so that is the uh, next point. You have to write point wise or if point wise is not possible, then write paragraph wise. The length, the length of solutions must be according to the marking scheme. That uh, you don't have to write two pages for a single mark question. Or you also, you don't have to write uh, half a page for a five marks question. So the length of solution must be appropriate. It must be relevant. It must be according to the marking scheme. You, either this you have to understand by practice. 
okay and i'll also show you obviously if you have a one mark question it should be within 50 60 words and uh, if uh, and few numerical equations or diagram if required okay and always try to start new question on a fresh page do not never never start a question uh, uh, in the last few lines of previous page because it makes the examiner uh, to turn the page and this definitely irritates him okay so always remember this point your marking scheme obviously is something like this okay so for electromagnetic waves and for optics optics also includes geometrical optics and wave optics both so uh, they have allotted 17 marks for electromagnetic waves ray optics and wave optics 11 marks for uh, this uh, uh, modern physics part which includes dual nature of radiation of matter atoms and nuclear physics and then they have electronic devices for seven marks so in uh, electronic devices you will learn uh, pn junction diode you will uh, learn about transistors and uh, many semiconductor devices like this okay so this that is the marking scheme so uh, prepare according to the marking scheme okay so uh, actually i have taken few i have taken few important questions that were uh, really asked in cbsc uh, exams and i have taken uh, some answers also which are uh, answered by few, few of the toppers okay few of the toppers so uh, by this you will learn you will see how you should answer questions theoretical questions in your exam so as the question says the define the term threshold frequency in the context of photoelectric emission okay i agree that you know a lot about this but you as this question is of one mark right one mark so you have to be very concise okay so let us see what a topper a topper of cbsc has written in his or her answer it is actually the answer given by uh, uh, a, a student who topped in cbsc so uh, let us see the student has written the definition of threshold frequency the formula for threshold frequency in terms of work function and uh, Planck constant uh, the student has also written what is the work function and Planck constant so and he has also used one more definition uh, i think this uh, other definition is not required okay if you write obviously they are not going to deduct your marks but if you write this much is sufficient if you write the definition and formula that is enough do not write extra details because obviously you don't do you know a lot but do not put everything for a one mark question just the sufficient amount of detail is required okay for next question i have taken one more question for uh, of one mark question so the question says the sky wave mode of propagation why is the frequency range uh, is less than 30 megahertz okay this is a purely theoretical question and let us see what the topper has written obviously the answer is simple and it doesn't require any numerical formula or diagram so uh, let us keep it simple just write few words that completely explains the question so uh, the uh, topper has written the singles having uh, having frequency greater than 30 megahertz why more than 30 megahertz are not suitable because when they uh, go in air they can penetrate the ionosphere and if they penetrate ionosphere they are not reflected obviously they are not reflected and if they are if they are not reflected how can we use them for communication okay so that is the simple answer and these much detail is just sufficient for the question okay let us see one more question of two marks okay this question says state Bohr's quantization condition of angular momentum and calculate the shortest wavelength of the bracket series and state in which part of the electromagnetic spectrum does it belong so you have to remember each and every part of this question obviously it's, it's a two marks question and the first mark is allotted for stating the Bose quantization principle of angular momentum and in the second uh, mark 
uh, they have asking they are asking you the wavelength uh, the shortest wavelength of bracket series and they have also asked in which part of electromagnetic spectrum does this wavelength belong okay so if you uh, forget any part suppose if you forget any or this part definitely you are going to lose half marks so you have to keep this in mind that you have to answer each and every part of the question clearly clearly in your answer okay so that the examiner don't have to search on copy so let us see the student the topper student has clearly mentioned the uh, quantization principle uh, for angular momentum this is the quantization principle of angular momentum it says angular momentum of electron must be angular momentum which is mvr it must be integral multiple of h upon 2 pi that is nh upon 2 pi and then only it will uh, remain stable in that orbit otherwise it will lose energy so this is angular momentum's quantization and then for bracket series see before applying formula the student has written uh, each and everything that explains bracket series and also the shortest wavelength so these are the details you must see all the details after this video uh, okay and and after using the formula that is the answer okay and then the student hasn't forgot that the wavelength they have asked in which part of electromagnetic uh, spectrum does this wavelength belong so the student has written the wavelength be belongs to the infrared region so do not forget any part do not forget to answer any part of the question because in theoretical questions there are many parts and i have seen many students forget they solve the main important part the biggest part and they forget few uh, things and they lose half of marks and half of marks make a big bunch at the end of the paper okay so uh, now i have a three mark question as uh, it says it says identify the part of electromagnetic spectrum used in radar and eye surgery so obviously the three marks have a definite have a classification obviously one mark is allotted for question uh, part a and uh, <coughs> half for radar and half for eye surgery and two marks obviously the part b it is a little longer than first that is why i have allotted i am saying two two marks for uh, part b and here it says it says you to prove the average energy density of uh, oscillating electric field oscillating electric field is equal to the average energy density of oscillating magnetic field okay so let us see how the student has solved it the topper student has solved this question so the first part the a part Clearly, here uh, the student has written microwaves are used and the frequency range for microwave is this. That is enough because it, it, is, uh, it includes complete detail about the question. And eye surgery, similarly, ultraviolet rays are used and ultraviolet rays have energy uh, frequency range this. Okay, so that is enough. Do not waste your time in writing extra details okay and now the second part the now second part says the energy density so you have to explain you have to explain in board that every uh, step the every step you are writing so this is energy density for electric field this is magnetic energy for magnetic field the magnetic energy density for magnetic field and we have to prove that these two are equal so we have to use a linking formula that electric field in electromagnetic waves we have electric field equals to magnetic field times speed of light and speed of light is actually equal to one upon square root of mu naught epsilon naught so uh, write also write this also because this explains your next step and uh, write uh, you can uh, also write substitute see how toppers write the topper has written substituting in equation number one so this is equation number one obviously and substitute this in equation number one and if you substitute this in equation number one make some uh, calculations and you see the electric energy density is equal to this which is equal to this and the topper has also explained using equation two we have 
these two energy densities are equal. Thus, the average energy density of the oscillating electric field is equal to that of magnetic oscillating magnetic field. So, uh, the, the student has also narrated the result in some uh, language and that is actually liked by, preferred by the examiners. Okay, So, always write sufficient details, I must say. Do not uh, assume that the examiner will assume these things. You have to write every step. You have to explain every step in your theoretical answers. Let's see what we have next. Generally, generally I have seen when uh, they ask you five mark question, they have two parts. One is theoretical. Usually one is theoretical and the other is numerical. So as numerical, uh, we will cover the numerical part in next video. So I am discussing only the part A because in this video, we have to discuss the theoretical part, the theoretical answers. So uh, they are asking us, uh, under what conditions is the phenomenon of TIR, that is total internal reflection, takes place and obtain a relation between the critical angle and refractive indices of the medium. Okay, so that is the first part and let us see how you have to write the answer. See, the definition, the conditions, the, the, con the definitions which uh, the student has written in this theory, they are also shown because the examiner don't have to uh, see everything in the theory. Okay, the examiner can see this these conditions clearly uh, just next to the diagram, and obviously it will explain the examiner that you know everything. Okay, and uh, these are the conditions for TIR. If the angle angle of incidence from denser medium the light is going from denser medium into rare medium. If the angle of incidence is more than critical angle, obviously TIR will take place. So, that is the way of writing. And now let us obtain. Okay. So, now the, uh, uh, we, we have next part of the same question. We have to establish a relation okay, between the refractive index and critical angle. So, uh, the student has started the next thing with, the, with, a, with a line. And then if we go on the next page, applying Snell's law on the interface, that line 2 is very important and liked by examiners. If you just apply Snell's law and you don't write is it, it may irritate some of the examiners. So always uh, write the concept, write the principle. Okay, before using that principle like uh, applying energy conservation principle, applying Kirchhoff voltage law, then you have to apply that, what? The principle. So, applying uh, Snell's law in the interface, the diagram is clearly mentioned. Okay, the diagram is clearly mentioned. Applying Snell's law, we have the results. And after getting the results, again, again, the student has narrated, the student has or correlated the result obtained with that of answers. This is the perfect way of writing theoretical questions. Okay, I'm very sure that this will help you a lot for your term two exams, and this will also help you in other subjects like chemistry, biology, or mathematics. Okay, you have to apply. You have to use the same techniques there also. Okay, so uh, remember these points. Share this video as much as possible with your friends because uh, everybody has to take benefits of this video. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.